the idea that Britain is going to be able to negotiate its own free trade agreements with countries all over the world and at the same time expect um, barrier-free access into the single market, um, I don't think that that in itself is realistic. But if the final deal on the Irish border came back with, let's say, the other 26 members of the European Union wanting a harder border solution, would you veto the deal? Well, I'm not going to talk about what ifs at this stage. We are part of the other negotiating side. We're part of the EU negotiating team. Michel Barnier has been very vocal and very protective of Irish interests to date because he has made it very clear that Irish interests are European interests. This in many ways is a test of the European Union in terms of how it protects small member states, which is exactly what it needs to do here in the context of the, the consequences of Brexit for Ireland. Ireland is a, is a country that had nothing to do with the decision for Britain to leave the European Union but is very much now in the middle of the debate to try and ensure that we protect ourselves in that context. Uh, and that is what I mean when I say Ireland will be fair and realistic but also stubborn. If we believe that these negotiations are moving in the wrong direction, if we believe that the British government is being unreasonable, we will say so. Uh, I mean, I believe that Ireland is actually Britain's closest friend here in the context uh, of Brexit. And friends need to talk to each other honestly. And I think some of the aspirations that I've heard uh, are not realistic uh, um, in, the, in the context of uh, the Brexit negotiations. And, you know, I need to be honest about that. But I think a lot of what we've seen today uh, in, the, uh, in the Irish and Northern Irish paper coming from the British government is really yes. good. Uh, and I think it's important to...